I want to email the agenda. I got some agenda served and they think that I'm not. Christ and peace be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Good morning. So, let's see. I'm trying to remember which tune we need to do today. I mentioned last week, in case you weren't here or you're watching online and didn't see this, that uh, there's many tunes to this little light of mine. And uh, I can think of three, and so we've done two so far. Um, why don't we do, I think there's a tune in the hymnal. Yes. <laughs> Which is a little different tune, probably. It is 585 if you have your hymnal. And if you don't, or you don't feel like looking to it, that's okay too, because it's a simple thing. You want to play it? All right, great. So we need to get our lights out. So
<laughs> and those of you who don't, or are tired of it. All right, so yes, of course, I lost. Hey, Pastor, can I share a snow story? Absolutely. Uh, you know Austin's uh, young female friend, Riley. Riley, yes. And she works at the nursing home. Yeah. And the other, the other morning, she said, I couldn't believe it. Pastor Paul was walking up there to the church, or to the, to the uh, nursing home. And she said, I stopped and said, hey, I would have given you a ride. And said, she said he had ice in his beard and it was during a big snowstorm. So, yeah, he likes the snow. <laughs> so I guess people are, are watching us, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, it was a joy to walk in there and see Riley, and you know, I was thinking this morning, and I know that most of you are, but just an encouragement to continue to pray for all the folks who serve us so well, those folks who work in the long-term care facilities around here that are burdened even more so with uh, all the health issues these days. Folks who serve us so well, I was thinking this morning, you know, my brain goes strange places, but bear with me. Be, are we grateful for all those folks who make the ordinary, simple things of life available to us, especially here in town? Because for those of you out in the country, you, you have to kind of take care of these things yourself. But I was thinking, you know, the other day as I was shoveling snow and, and, and I had to listen to Jesus remind me to take the log out of my eye before I complained about the speck that was in the eye of the snow plow driver who plowed shut my head. <laughs> and I just scooped up. And I'm just thinking, Lord, yes, you know, I am thankful for this. I'm thankful for the guys that work at the water department and the sewer plants and for the folks who work with utilities, the electrics, electrical uh, supply and gas and just so many things for which we can be grateful. And so I want to just ask you, uh, as you look at our prayer list uh, and, and keep before you these that uh, we're asked to remember together in prayer, we, we do want to mention in particular a few updates of the little Kylie, who was injured severely in Haiti, uh, uh, continues a slow recovery in Peoria. Her, her father had, had to be flown back uh, as well because his injuries were more serious than they initially thought. And so that family, as they continue to recover, Stan Weeks recovering from surgery after a fall and a broken hip. Uh, family of Betty Knuckles. Uh, Betty is Beth's aunt, aunt who we had been lifted in prayer a while back. Uh, then, as well, uh, Dean Lassiter, who we lifted up, uh, I think started last week, uh, has had colon surgery. And uh, after some initial complications, they are hopeful that that is going well and improving, that he'll have a long recovery. And Cheryl was sharing, uh, her sister Donna, who we lifted up uh, five, six months ago. Uh, with a broken leg, uh, they were able to stop and see her in Kentucky. And uh, <coughs> she's finally been able to come home, which is a joy and a praise, but she still has much healing ahead of her. Uh, also in the Bowling Green area, which uh, they had uh, pretty severe damage, not in their house, but close by, and much of that community also was hit in those storms. So, please lift them up. Uh, are there other updates or concerns? Yes, Carol. The family of Jamie Aubrey. Jamie passed away this past week, 49 years old. His family needs prayers. Family of Jamie Aubrey. And that sudden death. Family of Jim Paternoster. Oh, yeah. Let's remember the family of Jim Paternoster as well.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and worship you, for you are worthy, deserved, beyond deserving, you are the source of life, the giver of all good and perfect things, the one who is the source of light. Lord, we give you honor and glory, and we are so grateful that when we turn to your word, we often find witness that we can call out to you, that we can cry to you out of the depths. Or when we are feeling forsaken, we can call out to you. When we perhaps are feeling that we have done so much and Others don't appreciate it. Your Spirit reminds us of all that you have done for us and others have given us. And so, Lord, we're grateful that we can come to you today and give you thanks and praise and ask, Lord, for your forgiveness. <clears throat> that when we come to you for forgiveness, we can be confident for your forgiveness is perfect and pure and sure to those who come with humble and broken hearts who are willing to acknowledge to you our need and as we acknowledge our need also acknowledge that you are more willing to forgive than we are even to ask. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why at times that image is used in scripture of the purity of snow because more than the purity of snow is your perfect forgiveness that covers us that shines as cheryl was mentioning the moonlight shining so we thank you oh god for your goodness and mercy that fails us never we also thank you oh god that we can pray for these that we have lifted up today those that are on our prayer list, we're grateful, Father, for those who do serve and have given of themselves, especially in recent weeks, working so that we all can be comfortable. We're grateful for the opportunities that 
are given to us by the service of others, but that we might not be able to experience the ease of a trip to the doctor or to the store if it were not for their labors. We thank you, Father, for those who continue to seek your favor and strength and healing in their lives, and we are glad to join with them in praying for your healing and your strength. To lift up to you those that we know who are grieving, especially those who've had tragic, unexpected loss. But we know, oh God, that one cannot truly measure grief, whether it comes early or after a whole life. So we pray for each that your spirit would comfort, heal, and sustain. Immerse them in your love that holds them until that time that they are able to see your goodness, your faithfulness that has not forsaken them. We are grateful, O oh God, for ongoing care on our behalf for those who serve in the armed forces. We, we pray for them and for those especially who are serving in places of tension these days. We pray for wisdom for the leaders of the nations of this world. That there might be a peaceful solution to the rattling of weapons and the loud threats. That your peace would prevail. We're grateful, Lord, for your mercy and favor that is with us in this moment. Touching our hearts cleansing, refreshing us in the wonderful, powerful name of Jesus. It is in his name that we pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It is in Jesus, as we say sometimes, that there is no east or west or south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. And that's not just a phrase. In Jesus, we are through the power of his spirit knit together in love for one another. And so as as you give, as we continue to give thanks for the opportunity that our noisy offering goes to disaster response. I thought it was neat to hear from Cheryl as she was sharing about her sister, that, that reminder of how the church, and in some measure even some of what we give, has been able to help folks, perhaps, in Bowling Green, certainly in other places. We know for sure. And your ministry, in our ongoing support of the church, and in our investment in serving Jesus today, those that Jesus wants to become brothers and sisters are who we are reaching out to, seeking to know Jesus. Would you pray with me? Father God, when I think, I think, as the hymn says, of your son not sparing. You sent Jesus to die to take away my sin. When I think of some of the folks that I can recall who have sacrificed, given of themselves, served, taught, prayed patiently. It is amazing how much you invest in us. Thank you that as we become aware of your great love in Jesus Christ and your mercy and the opportunities that we have to serve you, that you provide for us these means to help others come to know Jesus. So be glorified, O oh God, in our offering of ourselves, our gifts, our service. And may indeed others come to know Jesus, to be brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray. Amen.
how they must feel. And uh, so we pray for those folks. I would like to add just a note to what you were saying. That's a couple of uh, the commonality that, that we have in Christ. Dale and I have found this little church in Florida um, that we've gone to for the last few years. And most of the congregation there are people like Dale and I who come and go. And the few members that are the, you know, the year-round members uh, are so very welcoming. And you know, this is, I think, their ministry is welcoming, welcoming folks like us. And it's kind of like we've been there. I mean, we have been there for the last few years. But that commonality of having Christ in our lives and the fellowship that you can just walk in and feel like you're at home. So I encourage you when you are on vacation to find a place and just go in and be a part of that fellowship too. And of course, our technology that we can see online too is, is wonderful. If you would follow along with the reading uh, in Luke 8, 16 through 25. And again, some familiar verses. No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be exposed, and nothing concealed that will not be known and brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my brother and my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swung, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided. And all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Praise God for your word. Any of our youth want to come up here? Yeah.
Well, I was auditing a class in classical Greek at the University of Illinois at that time. They really didn't teach uh, Koine or New Testament Greek, but they did teach classical, which is it is close, not the same exactly, but uh, the professor who was teaching that class was a young fellow, and his wife was also a professor, and she specialized in archaeology, and they would go on archaeological digs. And one day during class, as a way of trying to help connect us with some of the things we were reading about, he brought along some fragments of pottery that they had found on a dig. And one of them that he offered, he offered several of these to the class, one of them was a, a piece, a part of a lamp. It wasn't all there, but it was a small, if it had all been there, it would have been a small piece of pottery about the size of your hand that just had kind of a, a concave shape to it so you could put some oil in it and then you could float a little bit in it. And that was a personal lamp. And so it really hit me being able to see that and think about how when we read some of these things, now there would have been bigger ones, but that would have been an example of one that most folks would be familiar with. So I brought along with me something that's sort of similar. You've probably seen something like this. We usually use them inside of uh, candles. They're usually for decoration. Um, but still, it kind of makes the point. So, not surprisingly, you know, it's not hard to do. We can take this and light it. And uh, it's not particularly big. Probably is putting off about as much light as that personal oil lamp. And uh, you ever you ever go camping, spend any time outdoors at night? Um, do you always know where you're going? Sometimes it's helpful to have a light, isn't it? We use flashlights and things like that. But you know, the the point Jesus is making is really obvious to most of us. If we needed a light, very few of us would reasonably light our light, and then all of a sudden cover it up. Because, obviously, I don't do a lot of good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? If you were outside in the dark, or even home alone in the dark, power goes out, and you light a lamp, so you can see, then you're just going to cover it up. Now it can make a whole lot of sense, but well, this is one of those things that Jesus tells us that is simple. And if the light of God's love is shining in us through Jesus, why would we cover it up? Most of us may have reasons. Maybe we're embarrassed by what somebody might say, or we might be afraid of what they'll think of us. But if, if we love Jesus and we know the difference Jesus makes, why would we, why would we hide that? Or why would we, as we say, one of those verses, why would we let Satan blow it out? Again, fear, maybe concerns, but don't no why. But the truth is, we know that we need that light. So, I just want to give you a little light to take home with you. That one's cut. As a reminder, that when we have the light of Jesus, we let our light shine, and that's why I wouldn't recommend eating the candle. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for coming up. Sometimes it's helpful to have just a very simple, clear illustration. Well, okay, so the last few weeks, if you haven't noticed, we've been in Luke's Gospel. 
And as we're making that declaration of God's word known to us, ourselves, so that we can be inspired, empowered, and enlightened to be the light of Christ in our community, in our families, in this world. It struck me, we, we have a, and some of you, well, pretty much all of you can relate to this at one stage or another. Right now, we have a grandchild who is into that stage where, what? What? What did you say, Grandma? <laughs> and what I've noticed is that there's, there's a couple of different ways in which he says that. There is the what that's stated in shock or disbelief. There is the what that is stated when he hears something but he's so distracted by other things that He's not real sure what it was that was just said to him, but he knows something was said, so it's, what? And then, there's probably more, but the third that's become really obvious is there the, what? I don't want to do that. As we look at the Gospel of Luke, as we think about what's going on in our lives, looking at the Gospel of Luke and what we see happening in the ministry that's taking place has direct, powerful application to us and what's going on that we are encountering in the world around us, whether, whether you think folks are saying what or whether they're saying why or whatever response that we might be running up against. Or even especially when we're wrestling with those things ourselves. Uh, we, we talked, and I don't know, I hope maybe some of you caught from last week. We, we talked last week about having a beatific life. Uh, a life that is imparted with joy or bliss. And, and in the hymn, the bliss do you remember that line as we were singing? When we think about, as we spent some time talking last week about having the kind of life that's a beatific life that Jesus has come to make possible for us. Through the redemption, the cleansing of sin, the birthing of new life, the opening of our eyes spiritually and physically to be able to see and Pouring into us through the power of His Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, especially the one great gift that He says all of us should have, the gift of love. He wants us to have this life. And so I thought it might be helpful to just take a step for a moment and reflect on what do we see happening in the Gospels? Why is it that anyone would be paying any attention to Jesus? And, and so if you... Look at Luke's Gospel, but just, and you might want to turn your Bible or, and, and just kind of make notice of a couple of things. Well, a few things. Maybe more than a couple. Uh, I want to flip back real quick to Luke chapter 5. And in Luke chapter 5, we, we go back to that account where uh, Jesus is teaching by the shore of Galilee, gets into the boat, teaches some more, and you remember many of you thought there was interesting coincidence, which it was a coincidence uh, in the, the chosen episode that day about the catching of the fish. Wonderful miracle, incredible thing that was happening in the lives of those that were affected by it. But we 
we read on. As Jesus next in, in Luke 5 heals a man, it says, that was full of leprosy. Amazing. A sentence of death turned away into life. The next thing we read about is the account of some, some friends bringing a man who was paralyzed to Jesus, and they can't get to Jesus. So they climb up on the top, and they take up part of the roof, and they let the man down to Jesus. And Jesus says to him, your sins are forgiven, and everyone in the religious leadership is uh, offended by what Jesus is saying. And so Jesus says, well, what's easier? To say your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? So he says, get up and walk. And everyone is astounded and amazed at such a glorious miracle. You go on in, into uh, Luke 6, and, and we read, particularly in Jesus' teaching that we spent some time on last week, where he is talking about the kind of life that God intends for us, that we were created to have. And how that is indeed why he has come. To make it possible for us to be born again into that life that we were born for in the first place. And to live out that life that is beautiful. That is expressing bliss and joy. Especially in the midst of the challenges. And in dealing with the challenges that are thrown at him, and the questions that are raised that we read about in the Gospel accounts, Jesus clearly shows us that he's not telling us there won't be difficulty, there won't be challenges. He's telling us that our God is greater than the one in whom we choose to hope is the one who created in the first place. And so he does understand and knows our name and delights in bringing life and pouring out joy into the lives of his children. And then in today's text, as we get into Luke 8, Once again, we, we see Jesus manifesting this life that as you encountered it, as the people do, there's really not much choice other than to recognize that he's doing things that no one else can do. And yet, and yet, the connection to us in our daily life is it doesn't prevent us from saying what? Or what? Or what? <laughs> it doesn't prevent them. Because even in the clear manifestation of compassion, we live in the midst of folks who don't want to show compassion who want to hold on to old prejudices that would say there are some of us in this world who are less than because of who, where we come from or what we look like or what we do. And Jesus shows us compassion. He suffers with those who've been told they're not good enough. His, his intentional decision to spend time with those who were labeled clearly by society as outcasts and sinners. We should never twist that in a perverted fashion as it sometimes gets twisted as a being that, that those things aren't bad, those things aren't wrong anymore. But instead, Jesus clearly shows us that he's willing to suffer with those so that they can know 
that they are loved by God in that moment. That God wants to transform their lives and give them hope and give them a purpose. As the word God declared so long ago, for those people to hear and to see those things, those who were able to make the connection with what God had always been saying, like Je Jeremiah declared in the name of the Lord, when talking about having suffered for so long in captivity, God reminded them, I have purpose. Jeremiah 29. Remember those words that we put on plaques or we quote. I have a purpose and a plan for you. Not for evil, but for welfare. But that, in order to know that, you have to enter into folks' struggles and suffering and make it known in a way that helps them to know that they are called and welcomed and embraced in a way that will transform them if they'll say yes. And that makes some folks say, what? <laughs> it is the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ astounds us at times, like the miracles. As Jesus continues to astound us with miracles today. And, and sometimes, many of us, at least I am, are sometimes a little bit, uh, a little bit cautious about talking about the miracles of Christ Jesus because we know that there are other folks who are still suffering, who are still struggling. Yet we see in the gospel this clear, compelling witness to how Jesus ministers to folks in the midst of the multitudes. And lives are changed, even as other lives are not. What? As we encounter Jesus, as Jesus encounters us, and we get beyond the disbelief, we get beyond the desiring to see greater things were invited to the life that lets his light shine. It lets his light shine fully in us so that we can be that person that we know when we listen to the whisper of God's word. We know we're created to be we can live in that life of joy and bless. Not because we don't have any problems, but because we are united with one who has won the victory for us. And we can let that light shine because we know that even when sometimes folks don't believe, or are so incredulous, or are offended, the last thing we should do is turn away. That's what's needed more than anything is for more compelling, humble, faithful witness to the love of Jesus Christ. Perhaps it's one of the reasons why Jesus so pointedly asked his disciples later if they would also turn away when they became aware that he was headed somewhere that they didn't have on their agenda. And yet, he knew that's what he must do, that we needed him to do. What? It's an encouragement, even though it's hard. It's, it's like being caught in the middle of a storm and finally becoming aware that you really don't have any good alternatives. In the boat, in the middle of the sea, with the boat filling with water, they knew they were going to sink. 
And so they did the only thing they had left to do other than to give up, which was call out to Jesus. Do you remember calling out to Jesus? God's Word, God's Spirit, the church, we are always in need of reminding one another of what it's like to call out to Jesus. Because ministering this day in our community, in this world, requires that we remember what it's like. Because there's a lot of folks who don't believe and they need someone to be able to share with them how it is that Jesus has proven faithful to us. How it is that Jesus, who has done miraculous things, has shown us that he cares about me, not all of me. How it is that Jesus, who mastered the wind and the waves, cares about what's going on in your classes at school or in your business or in your home life. Because he does. And we remember. And we know that truth. And so we can speak to the what. And it may seem like they never stop asking. Half the way to Peoria. But eventually the answer got through. I don't know how long we'll be, but this I know, that Jesus leads me. As we, you and I are living in faith in Jesus Christ, we may hear a lot of what's, we may hear a lot of lies, faithfulness that's promised to us that we see in Jesus, that we remember in Jesus, that we celebrate anew in Jesus every single day. This faithfulness that's new every morning gives us a witness to the folks around us, to each other, to this world. Jesus is the one that they need to call out to. Give Jesus Honestly, be able to say to your friend, to your neighbor, to the person you know who is wrestling, who's struggling, who's feeling defeated, give Jesus an opportunity. I know that you may not believe that there's any hope. But give Jesus an opportunity. Pray with them as they seek to do that. And in some measure, the waves will be calmed, the winds will be stopped, and they'll see light and the hope, the deliverance, the love of Jesus that we know in their own life. Would you pray with me? Father God, as we think about all that Jesus has done, when we read about in the scriptures the amazing work, yet we know that it all was to lead to salvation, the new life. So as we personally live in the midst of the ministry, the mission field to which each one of us is called, help us to be able to speak to the what's. To listen, of course, to be able to hear about the wrestling and the struggles and the conflicts that folks are facing. And as we do so, to be able to speak honestly of how, Jesus, you have changed us and given us life and hope. Let us speak this truth with gladness and joy in this wonderful life that manifests bliss and joy in Jesus. Amen. 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 Closing hymn is my book in depth on nothing less. I invite you to join in singing and praising God in this declaration of faith. <laughs>
speak the joyful truth of Jesus, who I know of no other name, no other one, who has offered such life to me.